The film narrates the tale of a skilled American Oxford graduate who, with his distinctive abilities and boldness, establishes a cannabis empire by utilizing the properties of financially struggling British nobles. Yet, when he endeavors to vend his empire to an American billionaire, a series of events transpires, entailing blackmail, deceit, chaos, and homicide among street gangs. Will he ultimately succeed in selling his cannabis empire and achieve tranquility? Discover the full story in The Gentleman. The movie follows Mickey Pearson, renowned as the top cannabis kingpin in the underworld. Despite earning a Rhodes Scholarship to Oxford University, Pearson opted out of academia to pursue his ambitions. Rising from humble beginnings, his goal was to attain wealth and power, leading him to sell marijuana to affluent students and criminals alike. Pearson didn't shy away from using force against those who challenged him or his enterprise. After establishing a lucrative cannabis empire and reigning as a dominant figure in the criminal realm, Pearson aims to sell his business for a hefty sum and retire peacefully with his wife, Rosalind. Upon learning of Pearson's plan, American billionaire Matthew Berger expresses interest in acquiring the marijuana venture for 400 million pounds. Pearson showcases the grandeur and profitability of his marijuana enterprise by guiding Matthew to one of the labs. This lab operates in the basement of an aristocratic landlord's estate, where Pearson cultivates marijuana to aid the cash-strapped landlord in maintaining their prestigious home. Matthew is thoroughly impressed by the quality and efficiency of Pearson's cannabis operation, which yields top-tier marijuana commanding premium prices in the market. Curious about Pearson's decision to sell such a lucrative venture, Matthew inquires further. Pearson reveals his concern that his illegal business will eventually attract police attention, risking its swift downfall due to his prior criminal record. Fearing the imminent demise of his enterprise if caught, Pearson opts for selling it and seeking a peaceful retirement. Understanding Pearson's predicament, Matthew requests a tour of the marijuana processing facility to grasp the entire operation from cultivation to distribution. The scene shifts to Big Dave, an editor at the Daily Print tabloid, visibly irked after feeling publicly embarrassed by Pearson at a party. Pearson, aware of Dave's intentions to expose him, declined to shake Dave's hand, knowing Dave had already published several damaging articles tarnishing his reputation. Fuming over this humiliation, Dave enlists the help of a private investigator named Fletcher to delve into Pearson's ties with Lord Charles Pressfield and monitor Pearson and his associates' activities. Fletcher agrees to this task, but demands a considerable fee for his services. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Dry Eye, an associate of esteemed crime lord Lord George in China, reviews container documents with his crew. Dry Eye oversees smuggling operations for Lord George, including both goods and people trafficking. Upon learning of Pearson's plan to sell his marijuana enterprise, Dry Eye expresses interest in acquiring it, despite Pearson intending to double the selling price. Returning to Pearson, he is married to Rosalind, who runs a successful car repair business that has gained recognition internationally. Rosalind advises Pearson to remain cautious and composed, especially upon retirement, as their business empire would become vulnerable to various challenges and competitors. Being deeply devoted to his wife, Pearson values her counsel. Shortly after Pearson leaves, Dry Eye visits Rosalind at her workshop, revealing that some of the auto parts she purchased were contraband from him. Dry Eye requests a meeting with Pearson through Rosalind, but she cannot guarantee it. When Dry Eye approaches Pearson with an offer to buy his marijuana business, Raymond, Pearson's right-hand man, intervenes and urges Dry Eye to leave immediately as Pearson declines the offer. Despite Pearson's discomfort with Dry Eye's presence, he refrains from resorting to his former reckless and brutal behavior, contemplating a different approach to the situation. After some persuasion, Pearson reluctantly agreed to consider Dry Eye's offer before he left. Later that night, a masked group of youths broke into Pearson's marijuana lab, overpowering the guards and stealing a van full of marijuana. They then posted a rap video online showcasing their crime. Upon hearing about the break-in, one of the guards informed Pearson, emphasizing that the intruders were skilled in martial arts, indicating they were not ordinary delinquents and were likely acting on someone's orders. The group, known as the Toddlers, consisted of amateur MMA fighters and YouTubers under the guidance of their mentor, the coach, a former professional fighter who emphasized tactical thinking in combat. Upset by a student's misconduct, coach instructed them to delete the incriminating video from YouTube and was shocked to discover they had stolen from Mickey Pearson. Following the raid, 
Pearson initiated measures to remove cannabis plants from the plantation as a precaution, while Raymond delved into investigating how the group had located their lab. Pearson approaches Lord Snowball and seeks assistance in relocating the cannabis plants discreetly to a safer location. Lord Snowball agrees, but requests a favor from Pearson in return. He asks Pearson to aid Lord Pressfield in locating his daughter Laura, who has recently gone missing due to her heroin addiction. Pearson tasks Raymond with finding Laura's whereabouts. Eventually, Raymond discovers Laura hiding in an apartment shared with other addicts. During a confrontation with her roommates, one of Raymond's associates accidentally pushes Aslan, a young Russian man, off the balcony, resulting in his death. The incident is witnessed and recorded by a group of bystanders outside the apartment building, potentially posing a threat to Pearson. To prevent any trouble, Raymond and his men pursue the bystanders to retrieve their cell phones. Initially, Raymond offers to purchase the cell phones at a high price, but when they refuse and involve a local gang, Raymond resorts to violence to obtain the devices. Upon returning Laura to her parents, Raymond informs Pearson about an unintentional incident resulting in the death of Aslan, who happens to be the son of a Russian billionaire. Meanwhile, Laura, despite being returned to her parents, succumbs to a heroin overdose. Coach visits Raymond to express apologies for his students' actions and offers his services as a fighter to make amends for the toddlers. Raymond, in turn, asks Coach to identify the person who disclosed the location of Pearson's lab to his students and have them apprehended. Coach agrees and swiftly identifies Fook, one of Dry Eye's henchmen, as the informant. During Raymond's attempt to interrogate Fook, the man tragically gets fatally struck by a train in a failed escape. Raymond promptly reports the incident to Pearson, who suspects that Lord George aims to reduce the selling price of his business. Pearson confronts Lord George, issuing threats for encroaching on his lab and retaliates by destroying one of Lord George's heroin labs. In response, Lord George punishes Dry Eye for his rebellious attack on Pearson and proposes to acquire Pearson's business, a proposition that Pearson finds belittling given the differences in their enterprises. Lord George signaled one of his henchmen to eliminate Dry Eye, but instead, the henchman fatally shot Lord George. Following Lord George's demise, Dry Eye assumed leadership of the gang. As the new head of the gang, Dry Eye still harbored ambitions of seizing control of Pearson's business empire. Meanwhile, Pearson was alone in a cafe when a man approached from behind, intending to assassinate him. Thankfully, Raymond intervened just in time and promptly dispatched the assailant. Upon realizing he was targeted for murder, Pearson hurried to his wife's location out of concern for her safety. At Rosalind's residence, Dry Eye arrived with the intention of abducting her. However, she managed to eliminate Dry Eye's accomplices before exhausting her ammunition in her two-shot derringer. Dry Eye then incapacitated Rosalind and was about to harm her when Pearson arrived and fatally shot Dry Eye, preventing him from harming his wife. Following these events, Fletcher met with Raymond and disclosed that he had been monitoring Pearson, obtaining crucial information that could jeopardize Pearson and his business empire, as per Big Dave's instructions. Fletcher also revealed that Dry Eye had formed an alliance with Berger, who aimed to disrupt Pearson's business empire to reduce its selling price, which Berger deemed excessive. Fletcher approached Raymond, seeking a higher payment for the information compared to what Big Dave had offered. Upon learning this, Raymond instructed the toddlers to apprehend Big Dave. They rendered him unconscious, filmed him engaging in unethical videos, and threatened to release the footage online unless Big Dave ceased his investigation and refrained from disclosing anything about Pearson and his associates. Following this incident, Pearson and Berger reconvened at a frozen fish factory, which served as a front for Pearson's cannabis distribution operations in Europe. Berger urged Pearson to reduce the selling price of his business to 130 million pounds sterling due to recent conflicts. However, Pearson countered by revealing his awareness of Berger's schemes, presenting Dry Eye's frozen corpse as evidence and asserting his determination to defend his business empire. Pearson then compelled Berger into the freezer, where he faced the threat of freezing to death unless he transferred 270 million pounds as compensation for the bloodshed and the restoration of order. While Pearson acknowledged that money wasn't his primary concern, citing Rosalind's near assault as justification, he demanded a pound of flesh from Berger's body in any location of Berger's choosing as retribution for the incident. Meanwhile, Fletcher revisits Raymond expecting payment for his information, 
unaware that Raymond had been tracking him since their last encounter by placing a tracker on him. Raymond then instructs the toddlers to retrieve any incriminating evidence from Fletcher's possession to eliminate any potential threat to Pearson. However, Fletcher discloses that he also sold information about Pearson to Oslin's father, a former KGB agent. He reveals that the hitman Raymond killed on Oslin's father's orders was targeting Pearson. While Coach observes two Russian hitmen outside Raymond's house sent to assassinate him, he swiftly eliminates them, while Fletcher manages to evade capture. In another location, Pearson gets abducted by two more Russian hitmen but is rescued by the toddlers, who bombard the hitman's car with bullets, allowing Pearson to escape. Later on, Fletcher decides to pitch Pearson's story as a film to Miramax. Following his discussion with the movie producers, Fletcher hails a taxi and is surprised to find Raymond as the driver. Meanwhile, upon hearing about Fletcher's apprehension, Pearson and Rosalind head back to their cannabis business and commemorate their success in their own ways. The movie concludes. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want to watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.